Okay, let's get started. Um, as I mentioned, this webinar is about looking up metadata. This is a broad topic, so I'll be giving a top level overview of what this means to Crossref, as well as the resources we offer for looking up metadata or for matching DOIs to citations. We'll record the webinar and send the slides around when we're done. Um, the audio is for um, speak everyone but myself is muted during the webinar, uh, but there's a questions option, a Q&A box if you mouse over the bottom of your screen. Uh, so feel, please feel free to submit any questions that pop into your head as we go through the webinar. Um, there's also a poll option with three questions. Um, if you can fill that out at some point, uh, we'd appreciate it. So looking up metadata can mean a lot of things. We have a metadata record for each of the um, uh, almost like 90, over 95 million items in our database. Um, and each metadata record contains some basic bibliographic metadata, but we'll also hopefully have some non-bibliographic metadata as well. Uh, you may have a DOI and you want to retrieve the metadata for that DOI. Uh, you might have a citation and you want to find a DOI to match that citation. Um, or you may want to retrieve a lot of metadata related to a topic, title, or function. You may also may be looking for something very specific, like all research funded by a given funder in 2015, for example, or all article titles containing a specific term. These are all different needs, and there's a number of different paths you can go down to get what you want. So it can get a little messy and it's confusing. So I'm going to go over the options we have to get you the metadata you're looking for and hopefully give you some insight into how things work on our end. I'll start by going over what is available to you as far as uh, the metadata we collect. Each item registered with Crossref will have a DOI, a URL, and some metadata describing the item, like the author's title, publication date, volume issue, um, anything that you'd find in the citation of that item. All the, this metadata comes directly from our publisher members, and for the most part, it's complete and accurate, but we can't guarantee that. It all depends on what our members are sending us. If you're sending us metadata, you'll see how even the tiniest detail may affect the discoverability of your content. Um, we also collect non-bibliographic data about the items being registered. We collect reference lists, funding data, ORCIDs, license data, clinical trial information, information about errata, retractions, updates, and more through our Crossmark service. Um, we have some abstracts. We're starting to collect information about relationships between items, and we're always adding more. Um, a lot of this metadata is optional for our members, so it's not present for all of our records, um, but we're seeing more and more of our members embrace the idea of having a complete metadata record. With the exception of reference lists, all of the metadata in our system is available, and most of it can be interrogated in some way using our APIs, and we're finding that more and more reference lists are being made available. <laughs> there are three overall reasons to use our lookup services. You might want to match a citation to a DOI, you might want to match a DOI to metadata, and you might want to retrieve metadata for a number of items based on a set of parameters. Um, if you want to match metadata to a single DOI, um, as you'd need to do if you are adding DOI links to our reference list, um, that's that can be pretty tricky. Um, you can only find, if you're doing any kind of automated matching, you can only identify one match, and it needs to be the most accurate one. Um, this type of look, lookup is uh, probably the most complicated, but it's the most common that we run into. Um, matching a DOI to the metadata record we have is fairly simple, since our metadata is freely available. So there's a few easy ways for you to get to that um, metadata. You can also browse for metadata, by providing broad or fairly specific parameters, like for example, um, give me all metadata records for this other name and journal title with retractions. And of course, some of you may just want to retrieve all of our data. If you have a DOI and want to know what metadata we have for the DOI, the options are our metadata search user interface, um, our REST API, 
um, and an API that will give you the records as XML. Um, we also have an open URL service that will give you that same record as XML. Um, I'll go through each of these briefly. Our metadata search interface is handy if you just want to eyeball something. Um, you can enter a DOI as you see here. And if the DOI is registered with Crossref, we'll give you a brief metadata record. The metadata search results contain only a small amount of our total metadata, but it's enough to let you know that we've, you've found what you're looking for. There are some other things you can do with this interface as well, if you, you can dig a little deeper. Um, there's a little actions uh, option by each record, and you can select that and select the site option to retrieve the record in bid text, RIS, APA, and other citation styles. Um, so if you look closely at this, you'll see some imperfections here in this citation. There's a missing space in the article title of this DOI. Um, that's a tiny problem, and I'd say most of our metadata records are good quality, but um, I've included this in this example just to show that they're not infallible and to demonstrate the downstream effects of tiny errors like this. Someone may be using our metadata to generate citations to your content and something tiny like that it, it's not a good thing. It, it's not as big as misspelling an author name, but it does have an impact. Um, and as I mentioned, our metadata is provided to us directly from our publisher members, so we don't curate or correct it ourselves. From this action menu I mentioned, you can also select metadata as JSON to view a complete JSON metadata record. Um, this record contains almost everything we have for this item. There are some tiny bits and pieces missing, um, but we'll be filling in all the gaps in the coming months. Um, you can see multiple publication dates, when the record was initially registered, when it was last updated, uh, what member is responsible for the item, um, how many items we've identified as citing a particular record. Um, there's a lot of information available here, and of course we would have the DOI, as you see here. This data is also available directly from a REST API. It's the same JSON rec record you'd get from a REST API. I'll talk more in detail about that in a bit. You can also retrieve a metadata record as XML using both our XML and Open URL APIs. We have a few legacy formats for XML records, but um, if you specify that you want our UniXSD format, you'll get the most complete record available, and chances are that is what you will want. And the record will contain the same info as the JSON record, but marked up as XML. It'll have the DOI of the item. Um, it'll have some cross-ref gen generated metadata in the top, like the last update date and account of items we've identified as citing this item. Um, it'll have the XML as deposited by the publisher. Um, and of course that will have identifying information like a journal title, ISSN, article title. Um, and again, the metadata records we give to you when you ask for a metadata record will have everything that's submitted to us by our members with uh, the exception of reference lists if the member has opted to keep those private we've got a lot of members who opt to make those publicly available so if that's the case you'll see the reference list if not you won't see the reference list so that's how to find metadata for a doi um, Next step, I'll give you options for matching a formatted reference or bits of metadata to DOIs. Um, you can look up a match with either a formatted reference or with fragments of metadata. The appropriate tool varies um, according to your needs. You may have formatted references that you need to populate automatically. Uh, the most appropriate tools for that are our simple text query form or our XML API currently, but you know, always keep an eye on what we're doing because that may change. Um, if you're if you have resources and you're able to ingest metadata and evaluate it locally, our REST API can probably do the job for you. Um, our REST API does have a match score included sometimes that you can use to evaluate the results, but it, that can vary depending on what data you're interrogating, so you do need to make sure the matches you re retrieved are good ones. 
If you don't have formatted references, but instead have fragments of metadata or some messy references, you have similar options excluding our simple text query form, which only works with formatted references. So I just want to go over briefly what I mean by an exact match versus a match that needs evaluation. Our XML API and simple text query both break up citations or accept marked up metadata in which certain fields are very clearly defined. We're com we'll compare the author, title, publication year, and page number in our database against the ones you supply in your query. And if we find a match, we'll give it to you. We won't give you a match if, say, the publication years or dates or author names don't match up because we're not able to state with confidence that the record in our system is what you're looking for. So you'll get nothing. You can trust these results, but if the metadata you're sending us to look up references is incorrect or complete, or incomplete, or even worse, if the metadata, metadata we have on our end is incorrect or incomplete, we won't be able to give you anything. So um, always keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's not an exact process in a lot of ways. You'll get more results with the, our REST API, um, but Again, the results aren't bulletproof. You have to make sure you understand the quality of the data you're sending us and the quality of the data you're getting back. Um, so if you have the resources to evaluate the data and come up with something you're comfortable with, you can ab absolutely use that to match citations to DOIs. We looked at our metadata search interface earlier for matching a DOI to a metadata record. Um, you're more likely to use that interface actually to search our metadata. You can enter a reference and if we have a record for that item, it most likely will be the first match. Um, if you're not searching for a specific item, you can enter in portions of a title, a specific term, an author name, an ORCID ID, an ISSN um, grant or award numbers, and you can get results. From those results, you can further dig into the data by limiting by content type, publication year, um, publisher. Uh, you can also sort by relevance or publication year or fil filter on a specific publication. So it's, kind of, it's a good way to browse through what we have. Um, another interface we have that's used quite a bit, it's um, a bit long in the tooth, as they say, um, but it, it, it does a job very well, and that job is to populate a list of references with DOIs. So if you want to do that, you can use our simple text query form. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you cut and paste your references into a box, and fairly quickly, you'll get your reference list back with DOI links included. Um, you can cut and paste that back into your manuscripts. Um, note that, of course, not all items have DOIs. A lot of them do, but not all of them don't. So not all references will be matched, but it does a pretty good job of finding a match if a match is available. This tool is free. It requires registration, and we limit usage for this tool to 5,000 matches a month, but it's rare anyone has a problem with that. As, as it's a ma very manual tool, you'd have to do a lot of cutting and pasting to hit that limit. Um, behind the scenes, for this form, for each reference that we match using this tool, we've broken the citation up into parts like article title, author, year, we mark it up as XML, and we query that against our XML API. And this tool is used most often by authors populating their reference lists. Um, that also includes you know, undergraduate students submitting papers for university. Um, some members do use this tool to populate their reference lists to meet their reference linking requirement. Um, you can do similar queries and more using our REST API. Um, that the REST API is essentially the logic that powers the metadata search interface. Um, our REST API allows you to search, filter, facet, and sample crossref metadata. It's freely available. Um, no login is required. Um, we do have uh, some subscription options for those of you who want more robust support, but. All of the data is, is free if you want to just play with it. And you can retrieve and store the metadata and do whatever exciting things you want to do with it. And you can ask the REST API all sorts of questions. You can ask what kind of publications 
are registered with Crossref and you can get a summary of that information. Um, you can ask um, how many works have funder information and you'll get results for that. Um, there's, a, there's a wide range of queries you can do. You can search the entire corpus. You can limit searches by member or DOI prefix. You can look for specific such as a record with funder information from a given prefix or records from a given funder published in 2017 or updated in 2017. Um, you can look for all records with ORCIDs or all records that contain a given term. Um, this is just a sampling of the available, available options. You can do a lot of filtering by creation or publication date, as well as um, search limit searches for different pieces of specific metadata. And again, the results of the REST API are delivered in JSON, and they contain all of the metadata that we have. Um, you'll get the publisher name. Uh, you can get um, item level metadata like issue number. Um, here we have the license data, so that tells you, uh, gives you a URL for the, um, this particular item's uh, text and data mining license, as well as the date for when that license um, begins. Um, and of course, things like publication dates, you'll also see authors, page numbers, just anything that's in a me metadata record. We also have our XML API. This has been uh, kind of the core of our query services for many years. It's used by many publisher systems to match references uh, to DOIs for our members to use to meet their um, reference linking obligation. Um, it is also free, registration is required. Um, as I said, it's good for reference linking. Um, it gives you a lot of control over the DOI matching process if that's what you need to do. Um, the Results of your queries are returned in XML and will contain a full or abbreviated metadata record for matched items, depending on what you request. The most precise XML query requires you to mark up each citation following rules established in our query schema. Um, so in this example, you can see that basic citation is marked up into separate elements. Um, and each citation has a query key that you can use to match the result up to the corresponding reference if you submit a query that contains multiple uh, citations. You can also refine your query by requesting fuzzy matching on author name, for example. Um, you can also ask our query engine to do an author and article title query if a full metadata query doesn't find a match. You can also submit a separate author and art article title query. Um, these aren't as accurate as full metadata queries for obvious reasons. Um, as it's not uncommon sometimes for an article to be published in multiple journals or in a journal or in published as a book chapter, but it is an option. And we leave it up to you to, to decide whether that's the, the route you want to go down when you're rematching a DOI to a citation. You can also submit an unstructured citation, meaning that you'd submit to us a reference surrounded by an unstructured citation tag. Um, as with the simple text query form, we use kind of the same technology to manage this. Um, we have a citation parser that goes in and breaks this reference into parts so that and generates query XML, as the same XML you saw in previous examples, and checks to see if our query engine can find a match. Um, so what this means is that a well-formatted journal article um, is pretty easy to deal with. Um, books are pretty easy to deal with for the most part. Um, some other content types, they're not as easy to find a match, but we do our best and um, we're always uh, trying to improve this matching process for you. I also, before we wrap up, um, wanted to mention that we do support content negotiation um, and it's not just a Crossref thing, it's a data, data site and Medra also support this, supports this. So if you're uh, comfortable with doing content negotiation, that means, so if you have a list of DOIs, you can go to the DOI resolver and request metadata for that DOI um, in a variety of formats. It's not just a, our Crossref specific XML, you can get the XML. 
you can get um, JSON, you can also get Bib text, you can get um, RAS and uh, RDF. Um, so that is uh, a good option if you have a list of DOIs that you want metadata for. If you want to retrieve everything we have regularly, we do have a Metadata Plus service that you might be interested in. Um, and I've, I've got a link to uh, information about that on our website. Um, if you are a member, we also offer a OAI PMH deposit harvester that you can use to, har to harvest our, your own metadata in XML format using OAI PMH. Okay, I hope this was useful. We have information on our website and don't hesitate to contact our support team with any questions. Um, and if you have any questions for now, uh, please feel free to plug them into the question box. I do have one question. Someone's asking um, if content negotiation provides results for one DOI record at a time. Yes, that is correct. Well, thank you for signing in for our, our webinar. Um, it looks like we don't have any more questions, but if you do have uh, questions, please uh, feel free to send them to our support team at support at crossref.org and we're, we're happy to answer anything that, that you come up with.